Hello friends, welcome back to this channel. Today, in a new video, we're going to talk about a scientist who many people don't consider, but who was nevertheless the father of all things electromagnetism. He invented the first electric motors. He was born in 1791, and I'm talking about Michael Faraday, the famous scientist Faraday. He was born into a poor family and didn't have much education, but he met up with, or went to work with, at that time, some laboratory technicians like David, and he progressed progressively. Later, he gave courses and presented himself at different symposiums, and each time his experiments progressed, and he was the first to talk about electromagnetism, electromagnetic propagation. Then another scientist, hers, Maswell, appeared. I could also talk to him about Tesla's radio transmission, Marconi, and so on. But it must be taken into account that Faraday was a genius at that time because genius is often attributed to another scientist. Okay, what are we going to do with this? I have an inductance meter here, an inductance meter. And we're going to talk about energy. This device is called an inductance meter. We're going to talk about wireless energy transmission, which is very fashionable right now. I'm going to draw a picture on the board of what this device is so that we can start to understand each other. This device is an iron core that has this shape, the shape of a C right now it's like this, like this. If you see it, it has this shape because here we put a coil to test and here it has a winding. That winding is 220 volts alternating current. When we introduce current to it, the field is variable because I already said that it is alternating current and a line of force is produced from one pole to the other. They cross the air. This pole is a variable pole. It depends on the frequency it has here. Once positive, once negative, we said it's an alternating wave. Here there are a number of lines of force that go in this direction and then when the cycle changes they go back in another direction. It means that there is a magnetic field here that goes from one powder to the other, varying at a frequency of 50 in this case. Okay, let's go to the videos here, to the practical part, to the physical part. Hey, I'm going to apply energy to this device, to this inductance meter. The field, as I told you, is going to be produced here, but since the field is not visible, we are going to make a device so that you can see how it is stored in the poles. The largest amount of lines of force are in the poles and pass through the air from one pole to the other. But if there were some magnetic part in the way, such as this iron, this iron, the magnetic field always tends to go through the easiest path. It is much easier for the magnetic field to travel through the plaster than through the air. If I did this, the magnetic field would circulate through the iron and very few parts would disperse in the air. I explain all this so that we understand why we are going to talk about wireless energy, which is so famous today. There are cell phone battery chargers. There are cell phone chargers that are based on this principle of magnetic transmission. There are also electric cars that are charged simply by parking the vehicle on a parking platform and underneath there is a variable magnetic field that induces a coil inside the vehicle and from there it transmits the energy, it does not need to be plugged in. So, hence the name wireless energy. Well, let's get to the practical part so that we understand. I'm going to, as I told you, activate the inductance meter. I'm going to do it right now. What you see here is activated there. These are iron filings, which is the way to see the magnetic field. Look, I don't know if you realize how they are oriented. I'm going to try to separate them. Look what the filings did yesterday. Here it is in direction. There you can see the magnetic field. 
It comes out through the pole and enters our pole and depending on the position it has, the filings go upwards. It has this shape. Now, if I put an iron element in the path, like this one, look what happens. The magnetic field doesn't disperse as much because it's easier for it to pass through the yersh. Look what happens. They look for the yersh. Well, what did I mean by this? That the magnetic field always seeks to go through the easiest path. In this case, the easiest path is through the iron. That's why when you take out the coils and try to make a coil without a core, the performance is lower because there's less line of force passing through. Well, I'm going to stop for now. Let's do an experiment with this. This is an ice core. What happens is that it's laminated, they're sheets. I'm going to make a winding on the ice core to demonstrate that current can be induced over distance. This is a wire and I'm going to start winding it. I have to think about it a lot because depending on the amount of line of force that passes through the core plus the amount of turns, it is a relationship that I am not going to give you the formula for right now because my idea is for you to have basic, not scientific, concepts. A. I am going to think about it a lot and I am going to get the voltage that I need to do some tests. I could be done now, but oh well, I keep going around and around and around. I am going to keep going until I run out of wire. Well, in this case, the core has a winding, each turn is isolated by itself. I am going to connect this one to this one, but on the outside so that they do not move at all. But in reality there is no connection here, they are isolated. I am putting it on the magnetic field. I am going to insert a light bulb, which is this one. We are going to put everything close so that you can see it. Now I am going to take it out. I am going to plug in the inductance meter or the variable magnetic field. There they are. Look at what happens. I'm going to move it closer. Look, it's already turned on and there's absolutely no mechanical connection, just the magnetic field. That's the maximum, right? The closer it is, the more power it has. Look what's going to happen if I move it away just a little bit. All the lines of force pass through the. Now I'm going to explain something else. If these were in another position, like this, look how the bulb doesn't turn on. Many of the inventions that people make out there who have no idea, have to be perpendicular to the field. Here the vesicles are not perpendicular to the field and therefore it doesn't work. And there are things that some inventors or channels do who don't know anything, who are fake and put it like this. It can't work without a battery, even if it's close to the field. Look, with the correct position, it works from a great distance. Look, wait a moment, that's the maximum. It's actually a transformer, it has a primary and this would be the secondary. But if I distance myself, it also works because the magnetic field disperses through the air and tends to join with the iron. The easiest way, as I just showed you. Well, it's working there, but let's not fool ourselves, please don't think it's free. This induction comes from the current that I'm putting into the primary of the equipment. There is a wireless transmission of energy, but it is a transmission, not a creation of energy. I already told you, there has to be a variable magnetic field. This wouldn't work if it were a continuous conscious one. And I'll clarify again that the magnetic field arises from the 220 current that I'm injecting into the primary and the primary is inducing it into the secondary, which are the tests that Faraday did at the time, who was the discoverer of the propagation of magnetic waves. Now I'm going to give you another demonstration. Well, there you have it, you saw how energy C is transformed through distance. 
see? The closer the square, the distance increases, the power, of course, the amount of revolutions and all that. Now I'll show you something else. Okay, friends, now I'm going to show you how I also transmit energy to make a small motor like this one work. I'm going to set it up in the field. Look, there it is, rotating, transmitting wireless energy through the magnetic field generated by the inductance meter. This motor is working. Okay, here comes the practical part. I'm going to start there now. Look how it works. I'm going to stop it now. Let's go to the board and I'm going to explain how an electric car would be charged through a wireless system. I'm going to draw an electric car, of course, quite supplementary. Let's suppose that this is an electric car that L&M manufactured, a Tesla. And here below it has a coil. So I insert a coil that is at a certain distance from the ground, it could be 5 or 10 centimeters. I enter on a platform where there is another coil that will not be seen, which is inside the ground. I move the car closer. Here a magnetic field is produced and induces the same current that I put here. Let's suppose I always put 220 volts with 7 alternating current because otherwise there is no energy transmission. It will be translated inside the car to the same voltage or the amount of turns that I put in alternating current. Of course. Then here there is an internal charger that the vehicle has and charges the battery pack. This is your electric vehicle, Tesla brand, let's call it Sanit, which is charged by magnetic induction through a wireless system. It does not need to have a plug, this is no longer possible. The car is parked in a parking lot. Underneath the platform there is a magnetic field and it induces the current to the winding that the car has on the floor. It transmits the energy with little loss, it will depend on the distance you have here. Probably when you get close you have to be as close as possible. You saw that when I brought the iron close to the magnetic field the voltage increased. Well, this also happens with cell phones. Now they are doing magnetic induction or wireless cell phone charging. I am going to make a cell phone here, of course, quite a lot of your inventory. He has a cell phone. Inside the cell phone there is a small coil and you rest it on a base that has another coil and then the base is plugged into a socket, a 20 volts outlet and the cell phone rests on it right? Or there are many devices that are charged like this. Here the cell phone has its battery and it is connected to a charger that has an induction coil. All this is a wireless way of transmitting energy. But what happens when we talk about wireless energy transmission in another video, where I showed you a crystal radio, how is it transmitted? The question comes from this side. When the frequency of the magnetic field, this magnetic field, I am now talking about 50 Hz, I plug it into 220 volts here, I can have a frequency of 50 G, 1000, 20,000, 50,000 H, what do I mean by this? That the coil will depend on the frequency. The higher the frequency, the greater the radiation in space. That is why it can be transmitted over a distance. When I told him that it had to be in resonance, let's suppose that this is a transmitter that is producing a magnetic field at a distance, there has to be a receiver, I set an antenna at the same frequency to receive the signal. Now, this distance is greater, the frequency is higher, but the amount of energy that can be transmitted is relatively small. Only at a short distance and at low frequency is energy transmission very important. As you move away, Energy transmission is a little more complicated. That's how cell phones, television, radio, radars work, 
everything that involves energy transmission in the ether, in the ether, which is not mentioned anymore. Well, they are magnetic fields induced at long distances. Today, a new wireless energy transmission is being generated that is done with microwaves. It is a parabolic mirror, it is done at very high frequency. The radiant radiates on a mirror and there is a transmission in this direction of waves. At long distances, microwaves. This is a micro-micro-microwave and it is received by another parabolic apparatus that receives the microwaves, concentrates them at a point, this point, the receiver and extracts energy from here. Since the transmission is through microwaves, as if it were a very powerful beam of light that you do not see because it is not light, it is a microwave. Energy can also be transmitted with laser radio. And here they modify the signal to a 220 volt signal, let's say, or X voltage, which will depend on what you want to power. This is a modern form of wireless transmission that is just now being developed and there are some that would eliminate cables, but it is not that efficient yet. It is in the process of development and that is why I wanted to explain everything about wireless transmission. Ah, it is not that simple. There are a series of problems that are still being solved, which is this. But the wireless transmission that is concrete and that is already being used is this one that I just showed you, with strong magnetic fields at short distances and not at such a high frequency. I'm going to start this up again. You'll see how it turns in a motor. Look, this is a perfect transmission. I'm going to put it further away so you can see that it's working without touching it. See? Here there's a transmission simply by the magnetic field. I'll put my hand there so it doesn't attract it. I can put something else on it. Go ahead. Now if I put an iron on it, watch what happens. It'll go away more easily through the iron than through the air and the motor won't work. Well, friends, that's all and I hope you understand a little bit about what wireless transmission would be like. Hey. Write to us if you liked it, give it a like. Hey, we'll gladly answer any questions and if anyone has anything else to say, we totally agree and are open to anything you have to say. Until next time and I'll see you in the next one.